only 16 of these built, right? Yeah. This car's got some incredible history. Man, nothing sounds like a flathead. Rumble, rumble, rumble. Hi, I'm Dennis Gage, and welcome to My Classic Car. Well, this week we're in Kaysville, Utah, to check out a few of Dwayne Ashmead's cars. Dwayne's got a really interesting collection, and all of the cars have to meet three criteria. They gotta be sports cars, they gotta be rare, and they gotta be something that he thinks is cool. I respect all three of those criteria. And today he let me pick out a couple that I thought were particularly cool. A 49 Curtis and a 51 Allard. This is gonna be fun. Dwayne, great to see you again, my friend. Thank you. Good to see you, Dennis. You've got such wild cars, man. You know, I've I've, uh, I've heard about your collection for a long time, and then and, and then you sent me some documentation on it. And wow, you know, such a wild mix, and what eclectic tastes you have. Well, well, if you have taste, my wife doesn't think I do. <laughs> no, I think you do. I, I'm 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 siding with you on this one. Okay, but, uh, good. But you know, when I was looking through all the cars you got, and you got sixty some, sixty. Approximately sixty. Yeah, yeah, and it was really tough. I'm going, hmm, you know. What two would we pair up and do? But I thought I'd pick a couple of, well, they're all rare, but uh, I really liked this Curtis. I, I ran into this at a show with you once, and this is a wild car to begin with. The model name of this was sports car, right? That's right. It was a Curtis sports car. Exactly. But it's also got a very special history. Absolutely. So what's the story on this? This car here set a land speed record on the Bonneville Salt Flats in 1949. It uh, went 143 miles an hour, and it was driven by the father of the hot rod movement, Wally Parks. And the it one just, and only. The one and only. Wally Parks. And it's just a cool car. I, I just like it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a, a great-looking two-seat sports car with a great gauge cluster. Yeah, the gauge cluster is a Stuart Warner gauge cluster. That's period correct. All of the gauges were made in the 40s. Yeah, now, was that something made specifically for Curtis, or? I don't think so. Uh, I think that Curtis made the car to fit the gauge cluster. So it was something you could get from Stuart Warner. It was almost yes, like a package. Yes. Here's your gauge cluster. I've, I have seen advertisements in period magazines uh, promoting this gauge cluster this and using one? this car to do it. Wow, how cool is that? And, and uh, it looks like it's got a telescoping steering wheel. It does. That's like way ahead of its time. Yes, it is. Man, well, this windshield almost looks a little Jaguar to me. Well, it might look that way, but it isn't. It was actually cast by Curtis. The car really? was wrecked at one time, and the windshield was gone. But I was very fortunate. I found a replacement windshield with Frank Curtis's son, Arlen. Oh, you are lucky. It's got a, some interesting features. I mean, certainly the chrome stripe the chrome, just not stripe, but the panel down the side. And then you've got these wild exhaust tips here. Yeah, uh, this is the only one of the cars that Curtis put this on. I think that he, it was a design thing that he wanted to do for, to sell the cars, but he just didn't do it on any of the others. That was really miserable to reproduce. <laughs> I bet. So, like, two pipes come into that? Yeah, and it's, they, a, it's a dual exhaust with three outlets. How wild. So, it's Curtis, and he used a variety of different engines in, in cars. Uh, what was used in this car? It was a Ford Flathead engine. The engine itself was actually built by uh, Vic Edelbrock uh, with the help of one of his engine builders, Bobby Meeks. Man, that was really an all-star cast. It was. <laughs> it's really... It's it amazing. was. Let's go look at that baby. Okay. Well, it looks like uh, quite a hot rod setup in there. It is. As I said, uh, Vic Edelbrock built the engine. And this is Vic Sr. we're talking. Yes, yes. And so you have Edelbrock heads. You don't have an Edelbrock intake because it hasn't been invented yet. So they used an <laughs> Offenhauser intake. No air cleaners. No air cleaners. If originally, there was supposed to be a Studebaker's engine put in this, which was shorter, flatter, squatter, uh -huh. whatever you want to say. But when the Studebaker V8 was not forthcoming, uh, Curtis changed she to, got a Ford. Uh, to a Ford, and it was too tall, so he didn't have room for the air cleaners in this Man. car. Man, now, in the later cars, of course, he redesigned them so he could drop the Ford engine down and put air cleaners on, but not this car. You were saying the tack setup is different on this, too. Yes, most uh, tack drives of this period will come off the back of a generator, but they put the tack drive right on the crankshaft. Wow. Well, I mean, it's a, I mean, it's just a, it's a great looking car. Great looking restoration on it, too. Well, thank you. After we finished this, I, I asked Wally Parks if he'd sign it. He says, yeah. And so as he's signing, he says, this is the only car I'll ever sign because this is the only car worthy of my signature. Well, he did 142 
and a half miles per hour on the bottom right. of the slope. That's average, average. Average. He did over 143 wow. one way, but yeah, Unbelievable. average. Unbelievable. You put it back together so beautifully, she runs well? I, yeah, I guess so. Well, I think it runs great. Well, let's find out if it runs great. Can I Can I even drive it? Absolutely. Man, I'm looking forward to this. Pull that baby up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This baby may look mild-mannered, but she's actually got some guts. It's hard to think in terms of what was state-of-the-art back in, uh, you know, 60, 70 years ago compared to today. There isn't a, an antique or classic car, an old car that's as comfortable or reliable as a, as a modern car. No. But the driving experience is what you're after. You know, everybody talks about, uh, you know, the good old days, what, boy, they don't make like they used to. In, in a lot of respects, thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> you know? but, but, but you're right, there's nothing like driving something like this. So put yourself back in that era. But can you imagine sitting there, right where you're sitting, on that seat, that very seat, and going 143 miles an hour? No, I actually can't. Well, neither can I. <laughs> I mean, and I can guarantee you, I wouldn't want to. <laughs> But they did. This is my test road. Oh, is it? I've driven it about 80. And that's the maximum that I've driven it. But uh, it has more to go. Uh huh. I, I just didn't have more road to go. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a good thing, actually. <laughs> and I do love the sound of a flathead. Absolutely. a car, Duane. I mean, you do pretty serious restoration on things. Everything is original. All of the bolts in the car are original bolts. There is nothing, there is no uh, reproduction or no modern bolts. Take a look at that baby. Okay. All right. <laughs> Well, that, uh, Curtis, is a pretty sweet little sports car. And it is a sports car. It is a sports it, it car. It drives I... like a sports car. I like that baby. So do I. We didn't quite get to 142. No, we didn't. But, but that's uh... probably a good thing. <laughs> 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 All right, well, let's talk about another sports car. Okay. This is an Allard, but when I think of Allard, I tend to think of something that's even gnarlier looking than this, the, the J2. This is a what? This is a... This is a K2. A 51 K2. Exactly. Which looks much more elegant, because those were... I mean, the J2s are pretty, like I say, in-your-face race cars. Bicycle fenders, cycle fenders and stuff. Now you got these beautiful swept front fenders. Right. It's basically the same car as the J2 with a... Uh, more elegant a, body. Uh, yeah. Was this more of a gentleman's hot rod? I think that's probably a good way of describing it. It certainly was uh, used for racing, but it was also used for touring. So this is a, a 51, and is it a steel body car? No, it's a Linwin. The whole all, thing? All, the whole thing. Wow. It's my understanding they did not have presses. They took bucks and hammers and just started pounding. <laughs> <laughs> so every, like the, this wouldn't necessarily, this fender wouldn't necessarily fit on another K2. That's probably right. Because everyone was. Pro everyone seems to be hand built. Wow. And now this grill too. I mean, this is a pretty For, nice looking. I, have, I agree with yeah. you. So how about the ports too? Are they, I can't imagine anything on this car is really decorative. They must do something. Or... Well, I assume that they're there to let air come out because mm -hmm. they, they are functional ports. And then the louvered hood? The louvered lets the air out too. The radiator is about right here. So you've got a long tunnel that you're collecting air and you're uh, concentrating, if you uh -huh. will, trying to get it in. So you do need all of this to get it out. Yeah, yeah. So this is all dead space here. That's all dead wow. space. Crumple zone before they put them in. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, the Curtis had this really elegant, uh, beautiful windshield. This is really, boom, flat glass, flat triangle side glass. Right. And that's what it is. You know, 
Sidney Allard really didn't care what the car looked like as long as it went fast. <laughs> and they do go fast. And they do go fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, you know, now this is also uh, a much more, you know, intimate cockpit. That sports car, the Curtis, actually had a tunnel and, you know, you, you, had, right. you had some space. This is really, you better like the person you're riding with. You're right. Uh, I mean, your frame, if you want to look at the frame, look at it in terms of this, the width of this windshield. That's, that's it. Eh? That's the frame. So all of this extra, the fenders and so on, they're just hanging that on. But their actual frame is way, it's in. Man. And it's also, you know, it's an engine turn dash, but that is the most interesting engine turning I've ever seen. It's just like, I don't know. Like a bunch those, of circles. A bunch of circles, yeah. Yeah. And not just kind of what you need and nothing else. Uh-huh. Wow. Boy, and that, boy, that shifter's right. <laughs> That's right, right there. <laughs> it is, but uh, you don't have to go looking for it. Either. No, no, <laughs> I'll say. And then you know, beautiful swoop down here, slopes down to very delicate bumpers. Mm -hmm. I mean, they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't protect a heck of a lot. In fact, I think the trunk handle sticks out farther than the bumper does. It probably does. I've never noticed that, but you're probably right. Now, is this another one that you had to? Restore. I mean, that uh, the curse has been wrecked and everything. But no, I didn't restore this. It's pretty original, then. Pretty original, yeah. Wow. How many? It miles? only has about uh, thirty-five thousand miles on oh, it. That's not bad. Wow. No. Wow. She's she's beautiful. Now these things, I think of these things. Like, you could kind of order them with anything. A lot of people put Cadillacs engines in them. Well, not not necessarily. What you do, either you order it with an engine or without an engine. Oh, if okay. you ordered it without an engine, then you could put anything in you wanted. In 1951, the hottest engine out there was a Cadillac engine. So that's the engine that was dropped into a lot of these Allards. When they got over here? Exactly. So was that the case with this? No, this one has a Mercury engine. Sidney Allard liked Fords and particularly Mercury's. And so if he had his choice, he would put a Mercury engine in and the car before it got shipped. Yes, and that's what this has. Well, let's go look at this one. Okay. So I'll do this side. Just pull to the center, right? Yep. Let it go. Okay, and then okay. we just pull this up. The prop is on your side, so just pull the pull right the prop. here. Right, all right. right and then there. she goes right in. And the pin comes off, comes into the whole nice light hood. But it's different than the Curtis. Well, that's wow. right. Three because carbs. This is one screwing around here, were they? As I said, he wanted to go fast. Man, and, and, and off he heads. Off he heads and off he uh, intake. Wow. And boy, it's uh, she's open too. I mean, this is right. I can see everything. It's a ra this is a pretty raw race car. It yeah, still is. There's, there's no weight. To the to the car, really. To your knowledge, has it ever been raced? It's been raced on the back roads. <laughs> but, uh, you hear tell. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I've, I've heard that. <laughs> I've heard that. Yeah. Well, and she she she's a, a running machine like the yes. Curtis. Can we take this one out too? Absolutely. Well, you know, I'm on this side of the car already. So go go for it. All right, you got a deal. Uh oh. Magic touch. <laughs> you just got to know how to do it, right? I don't have a whole lot of feel for what's going to happen with this car. I guess it's going to be an experience for both of us. Well, it's an adventure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> trees make a great sound reflector. <laughs> <laughs> I love the sound of this baby. Boy, she's different than the Curtis though. Oh yeah. Wow. The nickname for an Allard is the Blacksmith's Revenge. <laughs> and they are they are kind of crude. They are different to drive. Pretty raw. Yeah. Yeah, pretty raw. Boy, this is a, it's a great feeling car, though. I mean, you, you feel cool in this car. <laughs> well, it's a fun car. There's, uh, I, it's not a bad car. It's just different. Yeah. I love looking out over the nose. It's just, it's beautiful. I mean, it, it's a narrow car. Yes, it is. And then is. you got these swooping fenders uh, up there, and then the black and yellow, really, uh, the color scheme sets it off. It's hard to miss. It is. <laughs> I've, I've had people call it a bumblebee, but... <laughs> <laughs> and did they all have the leather hold-down strap? Yes, yes, they did. 
There were no latches. So oh, so she's, that's it, eh? That's it. Oh. What a hot rod, though. <laughs> well, you pop that clutch and it, it pushes us back yeah. each time. I tell you, this thing's fun. So until our next meeting, remember, honor the timeless classics. I'm Dennis Gage. Happy motoring.